hello friends welcome to my channel ophthalmology academy today we are going to discuss a very important concept that is surgical limbus a very important concept in ophthalmological surgeries it's actually a 1.5 to 2 millimeter wide circumcorneal transitional zone between the cornea on anterior side and the sclera on the posterior side it needs a fair bit of uh, demonstration hopefully uh, you will get an idea with the diagrams and illustrations this is uh, the illustration showing this gray hole is the cornea and uh, these three this dark this uh, violet then this light blue and yellow are the three uh, landmarks of the surgical limbus I uh, will go step by step uh, to decipher this mystery of surgical limbus coming uh, to this this will be the superior aspect of the eye that's a 12 o'clock that's towards the forehead this will be the temporal this will be the inferior and this is going to be the nasal and this arrow points to the anterior limbal border, oh sorry, posterior limbal border, and this is the mid limbal border, and this is going to be our anterior limbal border. These are the landmarks for the surgical for understanding the surgical limbus. I will explain further, so bear with me. Then, uh, this anterior limbal border is actually uh, the interior uh, boundary, it's the anterior margin of the surgical limbus and uh, it is delineated by the insertion of the conjunctiva and tenons into the cornea. Uh, this is our eye model as a whole, but uh, we are more concerned with the limbus, that is this part. So if we uh, draw this part in a magnified way, we are going to get this. We will illustrate here, this is very important, so have your attention, this is cornea, this is sclera and this is the iris. A few points to note here is, this is our ciliary body this is the trabecular meshwork this is mesh uh, zigzag radish which i have drawn is the trabecular meshwork where this uh, black circle illustrates it actually uh, denotes the shalom canal a shalom canal is present in the posterior part of the trabecular meshwork again coming to this this thin line represents the tenons and this uh, this violet denotes the conjunctiva. They are actually uh, adherent to the this sclera but for illustration purposes I have dissected them out. Now see this is going to be our anterior limbal border. Anterior limbal border where the tenons and conjunctiva are attaching. Then this is our mid limbal border this mid limbal border is nothing but it is actually the junction of this blue zone and the white zone okay this is the mid limbal it's a junction of blue and white zone and it is a very important surgical landmark as we shall see in this video it overlies the termination of the decimates membrane. Then posterior limbal border is one millimeter posterior to the mid limbal border. It overlies the scleral spur. Uh, this is an actual video. Uh, we'll be demarcating various points here. You can see this area. This is the blue zone, and this is the white zone. Let me draw them in the proper colors. This is the blue zone and this is the white zone. This 
anterior margin the blue zone will be the anterior limbal border this margin between the blue and white is our mid limbal border okay and this one millimeter posterior to the mid limbal border is a posterior limbal border now important areas which are demarcated by these three limbal borders are called as zones which i have already illustrated these are two zones one is the blue zone and another is the white zone the blue zone is between this uh, blue zone is between the anterior limbal and the posterior limbal border this is the blue zone between this anterior limbal and the mid limbal border and this is the white zone between the mid limbal border and the posterior limbal border uh, one thing important note here is that as you can see the white oh, this white zone is roughly equal in all direction its width doesn't change while as blue zone the width is high, largest in the superior quadrant and it is very small in the temporal and the nasal quadrant while it is fairly wide in the inferior quadrant blue limbal zone is uh, uh, as I have described already it is um, the zone between uh, the anterior limbal and the mid limbal border usually seen only after dissecting limbus free of conjunctiva and tenens capsule as we have seen in the video now white limbal zone uh, is posterior to the mid limbal line now why we are bothering ourselves with the surgical concept of surgical limbus because it has many clinical applications uh, once you understand surgical limbus, it will be easier for you to understand ophthalmology surgeries as well as it will be easier for you to perform ophthalmological surgery. Uh, in cataract and glaucoma surgeries, usually the surgeon operates at superior uh, aspect of the cornea of the limbus that is at the 12 o'clock the reason for this is because as we have seen the blue zone is widest in the superior quadrant so we get more of the space that is here we have more of the space to place our incisions to do surgical manipulation and we have uh, more more well delineated surgical landmarks superiorly although nowadays temporally we are also doing but it's far easier to do surgery in the superior aspect that is the superior part of the surgical limbus because it's wide as i already told you even though the inferior part of the surgical limbus is also wide but owing to many reasons surgeons do not operate here one of the most important thing is the chance of endoph endophthalmites are more in the inferiorly placed incisions although temporal is now a day is being done second important clinical application is while we are doing cyclodestructive procedures or pars plana incisions we have to remember that these surgical uh, this this surgical anatomy the surgical structures are slightly more posterior from limbus in superior inferior quadrants let me explain uh, since the superior inferiorly this blue zone is wider so this surgical limbus is wider hence will be having ciliary body a bit more posterior will be having pars plana a bit more posterior in superior and inferior quadrant so anything any surgery on ciliary body and pars plana we have to make incisions post a bit more posterior in superior and inferior quadrants
like in cyclophotocoagulation we place our we have to uh, ablate this we have to photocoagulate this uh, 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 ciliary body what we are doing we, we place the uh, this laser beam 1.5 millimeter away from the anterior limbal border superiorly and inferiorly while as in uh, nasal and temporal zones we place it only one millimeter posterior to the limbal anterior limbal border so superior and inferiorly we have to place more posterior in view of the wider surgical limbus hope you get the idea third important application is in performing the uh, glaucoma filtration surgery is like when we are doing uh, trabeculotomy ab external that it is the trabeculotomy which is done from external there is another trabeculotomy which is trabeculotomy ab internal in which we do trabeculotomy from inside in trabeculotomy ab external a radial uh, scratch incision is placed along the mid limbal border to reveal the shalom canal let me explain this in trabeculotomy ab external we place a, a radial incision here so when we place this radial incision we are going to find the uh, we are going to find the shalom canal in the posterior part of this blow zone so as we place the we dissect uh, deeper and we are going to find the shalom canal in this posterior part this is the whole blue zone we are going to find it in the posterior part of the blue zone this is a very important uh, landmark and second is when we are performing a uh, uh, trabeculectomy it's important again to differentiate various surgical landmarks of surgical limbus in trabeculectomy we place our incision here that is after lifting the partial scleral flap we incise the we incise here and we dissect deeper as we dissect deeper we are going to enter the ac this is our ac anterior chamber we are going to enter interior chamber just in front of the trabecular meshwork this is the trabecular meshwork we are entering and then another incision is placed the deeper incision is placed here and this whole block is excised What happens by excising it is that this trabecular meshwork is excised along with it. So the aqueous the aqueous has a direct route of outflow from the AC via the sclerotomy to the subconjunctival space. So the intraocular pressure is reduced. This is an important uh, indication of uh, getting uh, knowledge about uh, this uh, surgical limbus thank you for watching do like and subscribe for more interesting ophthalmological videos